Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for coming out. Uh, it's really, really exciting to welcome Yoshiharu Tsukamoto of Atelier Bawa tonight. Uh, I have a sort of slightly brief introduction for him right now, and then we're going to, before he jumps into his lecture, we're going to pause and, and you know, go through the Hansen Prize winners and announce that just now. So, on the edge of your seat, um, so Yoshi joins us from Tokyo, as you know, where he's the founder and principal of Atelier Bow Wow, uh, a firm that was founded in 1992. Um, and I think it's not necessary to mention the impact uh, that Atelier Bow Wow has had on architectural discourse, thought, practice, and method. I'm sure hopefully most of you are all quite well aware of that already. Their architecture has won, I think, too many prizes to mention, both the national and international uh, levels and venues, and they've also participated in and curated countless uh, exhibitions and various artistic collaborations with really uh, interesting people around the world. Uh, but it's important to mention, for me at least, that, uh, that Yoshi and his partner Momoyo Kajima are also not just producers of architecture, but teachers of architecture. And they've been teaching uh, since they graduated from uh, university consistently. Uh, and I think it's something that it comes about in, in also the, that you'll see in the practice uh, of Bow Wow's work and the way they think. I think there's, there's a sense of, of kind of, uh, that you'll, you'll sort of recognize uh, with your own kind of relationships that you have with your own studio instructors, perhaps. Uh, but not only have they been continuously teaching, they've been teaching in some of the most exciting institutions around the world, so like GSD at Harvard, ETH, UCLA, uh, Royal Danish Academy in Copenhagen, Rice University, and of course, Tokyo Institute of Technolo Technology, where Yoshi teaches till, still today, and the University of Tsukobu, uh, where Momoyo has uh, been teaching for quite some time. Uh, and like many of us in, in my own generation, uh, I, I first became aware of Bow Wow's work uh, in the written form, in a publication, a series of publications they put together, the first one being made in Tokyo in 2000, uh, and then followed, oh, sorry, 2001, and then followed by Pet Architecture, uh, both guidebooks, uh, in 2002. Uh, and if you're aware of these, these texts, uh, first of all, they're just wonderful. Uh, but they're, they're somewhat unassuming volumes. Uh, and they were produced around a kind of interest in the anonymous architectures of Tokyo. Uh, and between the two of them, I think they really opened up a new kind of architectural ethnography of the modern urban conditions, maybe that's the way I would describe them. Uh, the books capture the strange and sort of document the impossible uh, and, un and officially undesigned architectures that are somehow made possible in the cracks and gaps in Tokyo's planning of, uh, of, it, of its urban spaces. The odd and the spaces between that are somehow never meant to uh, be inhabited or even exist at all, um, and, and that somehow nevertheless always do. So, in these spaces, a kind of an odd poetry of architecture emerges, uh, which we might, of course, refer to as pet architecture, as they do. So, through an exploration of the mixing of building and urban surroundings, so infrastructures, public spaces, architecture, uh, furniture, and so on. Atali Bawa explores how the unintended anonymous spaces of Tokyo open the opportunity of new creative forms of inhabitation. So as they write, quote, as, as a result, people and vehicles, people and objects coexist without hierarchy in the same space and form, and strange organisms of urbanism are packaged together. They continue saying, the vague, incomprehensible place called Tokyo somehow becomes manifest through this collection. This is really a beautiful way of understanding the city right, through architecture. So something that's not reducible to some kind of exploration of like the culturally specific adaptation of modernism that we might think of as critical regionalism, nor an attempt to expand the canon to the sort of non-architect design, design spaces, but rather to use these spaces and architectures as kind of a lens to understand and document the conditions of life in modern, urbanized, industrialized spaces city. And all of this was part of, but also I think helped to, to usher in a new way of understanding the city when it came out again about almost 20 years ago now. 
uh, through the ways in which we inhabit its contradictions, its fissures, and complexities that slip beyond the kind of totality uh, or efficiencies with which modernization tends to be imagined, uh, opening instead to spaces beyond it. So this is, I think, for me, very fascinating. And often the representations and documentations of these architectures um, uh, uh, Atelier Valois was exploring the kind of cavalier pr projections, sort of a flat uh, elevation and projected off as an isometric. Um, and these projections, I think, that you find in much of their work, especially their earlier work, uh, I think somehow reveal a kind of playful way of interpreting the space that they encounter as something to not take too seriously. To do so, we might miss then their collective invitation for imaginative, poetic forms of life that exist beyond the functional reductivism of modern urbanized landscapes. But perhaps more than any kind of grandiose commentary on modernization, I think what we find in the pet architectures of our worlds, uh, and, and that Yoshi and Momoyo have so charismatically shown us, is how much our gestures, activities, behaviors, our sense of communal modes of existence all rely on our being with uh, and attention to these fantastic objects that fill our spaces. Uh, and I think it's important to say that it's not somehow a kind of determinist sort of relationship uh, uh, where, where architecture and these kind of behaviors kind of produce one another, but rather the micro-architectures that Atelier Bauwell lovingly document, uh, or have documented in, in uh, these books, and that so fascinated the architectural world at that time reveal themselves to be more like companions in our life worlds, whose designs somehow enlist our bodies in unexpected ways, uh, in as much as we enlist them, in turn, to serve our needs and expectations. So it, for me, it's this boundary of conviviality, perhaps. Uh, um, Yoshi's talked about conviviality a lot, that, that animates much of Atelier Bauwau's work in what they have called behaviorology. So something I think Yoshi might touch on today. In turn, such forms of observation intoxicate uh, Atelier Bauwau's work, which as a whole seems to pivot across the boundary condition that architecture always mediates. On one side, with architecture, you know, we create and project space, form, materiality. But on the other, our social relations, activities, behaviors, uh, always extend beyond architecture, and architecture in turn is always ensnared in social relations. Architecture, we might say, is this kind of knot that ensnares space and society through the practices, micropolitics, and behaviors that Atelier Bauwau are interested in exploring. So through this lens, architecture can in turn invent new, unrealized knots of entanglement, which I think Bauwau have explored uh, through various projects, from public kitchens to kiosks for vegetables to Furnace cycle, which is a furniture bicycle kind of hybrid uh, object, uh, and installations that they've worked on, and many, many houses that they've also invested in lots of time, and all of which somehow enunciate the poetics that necessarily lace the modern city, the modern urban condition. But this work is not to be confused with some kind of romantic in engagement with the city and its somehow unexpected worlds. It is and has always been a profound critique of the destruction of communal forms of life and the networks of support that they've relied on. A critique of the larger, more powerful forces of capitalism, industry, and technology that work to unearth these networks, to make them distant, unnecessary, to redirect our senses away from the poetry of our everyday encounters with the city of objects and bodies, to make life increasingly abstract, and it's precisely these anonymous architectures that have been so influential for their work because they help us to see the fragments uh, of, of these ecologies of livelihoods that nevertheless persist. So finally, perhaps what most excites me about Atelier Bauwa's work is not what we typically expect of an architect of their stature, right? So the anthology of recognizable buildings, a certain style or a named technique, Right? Rather, what makes Yoshi and Momoyo's work so important is how it reflects a way of seeing the world differently. To think with anthropologist Anna Lohenhaut Singh, we might say that Bao Wow reminds us that what matters more today is how we might cultivate the art of noticing and put this to work 
to discover other realms in which to know what architecture can possibly be. So please help me welcome Yoshi. Thank you for the introduction. It's a perfect. Uh, yes, I have, yes, perfect introduction. I have a camera. <laughs> so it's it's a almost yes done. <laughs> So um, thank you for um, giving me uh, uh, such an uh, opportunity to talk um, uh, <coughs> in front of you in the uh, United States of Iowa. And um, um, I'm very glad to be here. And so um, I think uh, I'm, uh, yeah, in, through my um, survey, uh, it, it, I'm uh, the only person who who actually visit uh, Iowa State in my network. So, <laughs> so I'm very, yes, I, I, I feel uh, honored to be the first person to come here and <laughs> from my network. So I will, I will tell my friends and uh, my colleagues about the uh, school. And today's lecture is about its title on architectural behavior in creating better accessibility to the local resources. So uh, the <coughs> behaviorology is uh, the title of our monograph from Victoria in 2010, uh, um, showing the uh, various uh, activities of the uh, uh, from architectural uh, design practice and urban study and uh, uh, art installation, art project, and uh, also writing, etc. And um, in order to make a uh, 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 monograph uh, which cover different activities, we try to find a uh, uh, um, consistent interest among the, all these different uh, activities. And then I realized that behavior is very um, uh, strong, uh, um, uh, strong interest uh, in every hour. So we are always uh, starting uh, our design process uh, from uh, observing the behavior of many different types of uh, things. So it's not only human beings, uh, also nature, like uh, heat and wind and humidity, rain. Uh, all, all trees, all these things behave based on their own uh, uh, their own nature, and we can't really change this nature. We can guide them, we can limit them, we can encourage them to perform in a certain way based on their nature, but we can't really change the nature. And then I think human behavior is the same. So basically, the behavior of the human being is. Uh, is, uh, is something already embedded, embodied in, in each of you, each of us. And uh, in a certain, uh, if there is a certain circumstance set, and then it's, uh, it's, it's some sort of, yeah, and, and then we start behaving in a certain way. And, um, <coughs> and then there is not so many uh, high, strong individuality among this, uh, within this, uh, uh, realm of uh, behavior. It's a share, it's a very, sh um, it, it is something shared among, among us. And it, it's uh, difficult to monopolize the, the behavior um, uh, by, by, by yourself. So even the millionaires can't really um, uh, monopolize uh, the behavior like you, the, the legs on the, the back of the chair. So there are several people sharing the same behavior. <laughs> but the, you know, I can't buy your, your behavior to limit it, you know? So it's up to you. So. And, then, <clears throat> and then building itself also behaves. So if you go to different places in the world, and then you discover different typology lining up on the street, creating a, a nice uh, streetscape sometimes. And then, and then this is also behavior, different behavior of the building from, from different places. And also, even in the one, one same street, there are many different generations of the building. Uh, uh, and then it also tells 
how uh, building behavior might might transform through time. So um, so so it means uh, uh, you know observing behavior. We become uh, quite sensitive about time scale. So it's totally up to the time scale. So if you so um, the behavior you can observe is uh, depends on how which kind of time scale you are. <coughs> so uh, and then architectural design is uh, is uh, is uh, somehow uh, synthesizing all these different behavior in one physical entity. It means you need to uh, coordinate different behavior based on different nature and then different time scales uh, as one body. And then, so I think this is uh, um, quite uh, a fascinating thing for me to <coughs> think about architecture design or, uh, or urban design from behavior behavior point of view. So, the, so I like to show little by little how uh, behaviorology can can apply in different type of work. The first one is uh, of so called I, I call void metabolism, which is a uh, um, the study on city of Tokyo, um, and uh, <coughs> who, uh, who constantly regenerate <coughs> from old grains into new grains, which is actually the healthy. So this is a view of uh, Tokyo from uh, Metropolitan Government um, Observatory. And it was the uh, northwest direction. And uh, you see the infinity of repetition of the tiny little grains and uh, they are all most of them are houses so this is a main uh, fabric um, of the uh, city of Tokyo so city, Tokyo is consists of individual detached housing houses and um, of course we have uh, some skyscrapers and tower condominium but it's uh, I think it's still very really exceptional and uh, there is uh, statistics about the uh, lifespan, average lifespan of the building um, in, in, in different country. And um, so uh, uh, Japan has a Japanese uh, uh, building life average is quite short, it's 30 years, in compared to England, in which, uh, which is uh, 141 years. So within this short reason of visualization, uh, there are so many uh, strange phenomena is uh, happening inside mm -hmm. of this urban fabric. And then, but why this uh, uh, urban fabric has been constructed, is it's, uh, it's, uh, it's because of the uh, destruction of the city. As you know, we had a uh, Tokyo experienced uh, huge destruction size. The first one was a big Kanto earthquake in 1923. And then the second one is uh, uh, World War II, uh, 1945. So this is a, a view of a Tokyo, uh, uh, central part of Tokyo uh, after the war. After the war. So from this um, uh, uh, devastated condition, um, the city of Tokyo has been reconstructed little by little. And then, <coughs> but at that moment, Japanese government didn't have enough ability to, to, to make a uh, uh, big urban planning because uh, uh, we were under the governments <coughs> of uh, allied forces. And then, uh, although we, uh, the, some scholars, some urban um, planner established, uh, designed the, uh, the new urban um, uh, um plan, but the, also the, the, the budget was uh, totally uh, cut and, um, and then it's, it, 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 it wasn't built in, in that way. So only uh, government could do for the reconstruction was asking people to make their own houses by themselves. So, so I think then this, and then only possibility for, for each individual family, uh, the, the means to construct the house was single family to touch the house. And um, there is also uh, another uh, uh, restoration of uh, Farm, farm run uh, after World War II. So um, the, it used to be uh, the big land of land, land, land owner, and then uh, the uh, farmers rent from land owner, um, subdivided farmland, and then they cultivate and then pay to the landlord, and then also to the government. So it was almost double tax uh, conditions. And then it's also fixed uh, social hierarchy in the society. 
And then I think uh, uh, it's an allied force who thought this hierarchy made Japanese people mad in during the war. So uh, they tried to re, re, uh, re, uh, de uh, decompose this uh, hierarchy by changing the landowning land uh, uh, system. So, and then many people become suddenly landowner in Japan. So many farmers become landowner. And then it was a, uh, it, it's a, and then those farmland uh, turned into housing, uh, residential area, and then this uh, sprawls, uh, or, or actually, yeah, uh, sprawl happened. And then in 1960s, uh, there, is a, uh, there was a, a World Design Congress in, in Japan, um, and uh, the Young Architects Group, Metabolist Group, uh, made a manifesto um, titled Metabolism. And uh, this uh, the left image is the uh, most famous uh, um, uh, building <coughs> from that period, which is called Nakagin Capsule Tower, designed by Kisho Kurokawa. And it's a really um, uh, show how architects at that time believe uh, uh, the urban um, creation. So they, they this model, which is uh, articulated in the uh, eternal particle core, which consists of uh, light lines and circulation, and then replaceable capsule, uh, which also demonstrates the individuality, uh, <coughs> shows how the, 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 the urban creation can happen by the concentration of the power and capital. But uh, actually, the recovery of the, from the World War II, and then the urban creation uh, uh, resulted in this manner. So very flat and uh, vast uh, uh, housing area, well connected by um, uh, train lines and uh, public transport. And um, but uh, within this uh, um, uh, public, there is a, a constant regeneration every 30 years. But uh, this regeneration happens not on around the core. It's uh, why uh, it's around uh, void between buildings because all the buildings are detached each other. So um, we can say that the metabolism in 1960s uh, was a core metabolism because they believe core was the important element. But actually, what uh, what really um, achieved was the void metabolism. So the metabolism with void. So within this nature of the urban public of Tokyo, there are several interesting phenomena. One of I, I, I like to introduce one of them, subdivision. It's the neurology of subdivided suburban. And uh, so nine, Okusawa area it was uh, um, the first generation of suburban development from 1920s. So it's already 95 years old. <coughs> 90, Yes, 96 years old. So this, this study um, was uh, done 12 years ago, but um, yeah, I think basically it's so. so this is a view of Oksawa, so this random collection of housing without uh, um, any visual order. And uh, for a long time, I, I wonder why this kind of uh, randomness might happen, might achieve, might be achieved. And then it's because of the very simple I realized that this is a, a kind of just a mixture of uh, the different generations from different uh, from different era, <coughs> but same typology, the single family detached house. And uh, if you see the um, the, um, the map of the, of this area from 1920s on until today, uh, it's clear that the the, uh, the property were subdivided into small pieces. Initially, it used to be 250 square meter, but now the average is 75 to 80 uh, square meter, like uh, 2,050 2, square feet to yeah, uh, 800 square feet. Yeah. Uh, and then, so the mechanism of this subdivision can be explained by this diagram. So this is the, it's a, it's a, it's a, this diagram shows from first generation to uh, the second generation and third generation along one street. So um, the 250 square meter uh, property 
And the end of the 1980s, at the moment of the bubble economy, uh, it's a booming uh, moment, it costed six million dollars, just 250 square meters. And then the inheritance tax was 50%. So it means if you are a single child who inherit this property from your parents, you have to pay $3 million as tax. So it normally can't afford it. So most of the case, the land was subdivided into small pieces. And then they keep uh, the uh, easy uh, property, which is uh, the form of the square. <clears throat> and then sell the dif difficult uh, property, which is called flat hole site. It looks like plug and hold. And then, so this is uh, uh, the, the, the mechanism. So, and then the, this uh, regionalization of the house is totally up to the initiative of each family. So some families still keep the first generation house. So it looks like this. Uh, the house with uh, green hedge at the edge of the property. And then the, the garden is too much grown and then you don't see the house so much. And then they don't have the garbage because the uh, 1920s, Japanese <coughs> society didn't have cars so, for, for this kind of uh, family. And then the second generation, around 50s, 60s, so the property become a little bit smaller, but and then uh, together with the garage, but still try to, they still try to cover the building and property by the building. And then the third generation is like this. So it's uh, after the 1980s, so the developer bought the uh, initial property and some divided them into three, four pieces, and then built this kind of kind of the, the, the house with uh, kind of a sweet, almost a sweet decoration like a lemon type, or orange type, and strawberry type, and chocolate house. And then, uh, and then, uh, then the, there's no garden, there's no crazy exterior space like Engawa. There's n um, uh, then the, 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 the garden becomes uh, just the gap space between buildings, becomes dead space. And then window size became extremely small, so you don't see what is uh, happening inside of the house. So, and then this is really um, a kind of, this is a transformation of the 20 century uh, single family house in this uh, kind of uh, um, uh, residential area. So, so the, the tendency of the housing in 20th century was, uh, um, can be uh, summarized by three factors, three premises. It was designed uh, for a pure, uh, the nuclear family, too pure for family, and then too much interior lines, and then by production of the gap space. So each, each uh, construction produced gap space without having any definitions about it. And then after 2010, so uh, theoretically all the um, houses, um, this kind of single family housing in Tokyo, can be considered as fourth generation house because uh, the history of uh, suburban de development is already 19 years old and and then the, the, the reason of the regionalization of the house is 30 years, so at least uh, uh, the city has already experienced uh, uh, the uh, regionalization three times. So, okay, so after 2010, it must be the fourth generation. So what is the fourth generation house? Should be. <coughs> How a fourth generation house can be? So we made the uh, three premises, uh, uh, revising the, 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 uh, the uh, previous uh, premises of 20th century house. So the, uh, the space with non-family members. So okay, the, the membership of the single family house uh, might be open, semi-open. Uh, and then more opportunity to stay outside of the house. So let's have a lodger space, a terrace, or so, uh, kind of balcony to incorporate the, uh, the, the gap space as part of it. And then we redefine the gap space because we all already know that uh, every construction produces gap space. And then the one of the examples is the house in Atelier Pahua where we are living and working. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, this is the exception perspective. So on the lower level, the lower level of the building, basement and ground level, it's uh, office. And then 
uh, upper two levels are house, but the, the space in between uh, above the, the bookshelves, this is a living room, but it's a kind of mixing chamber between house and office. So um, there is also kitchen and dining space, so the staff can come and then cook and dine. And, uh, and then also, they also we also have a big meeting and sometimes we do a photo shooting uh, session and uh, of the model and, um, and then etc. And we have a rooftop, it's missing a little bit. Uh, and then there's no, only one entrance. So in order to go to, the, to my, my bed, I have to pass through the office. And then uh, this is a kind of, a, yeah, this is a real um, example of a semi-open membership of the family. In, in the in the house, it looks like this. So it is built in the flat pole site because uh, this site is not so pop it's uh, it's uh, difficult to build. So it's uh, relatively cheaper. So we bought this property and then uh, and then built this house. So the house is uh, hidden, quite hidden from the street. So you enter the house, you see the office directly, and then. The space is uh, somehow ending by the by this shifting column because uh, the the how how to design this building is uh, we across uh, the wall we 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 find the optimal the volume envelope uh, possible on this site. There are some several height degradation etc. So it's uh, it becomes like this. It becomes smaller and smaller uh, um, on up, upper level. And then we insert several floors um, uh, in order to receive <coughs> certain activities. And then we connect them by columns. Then column is not the first. So envelope first, and then floor second, and then column third. Normally the uh, envelope first, and then column second. But uh, we, in this case, we, do the, the, we give a uh, um, a priority to the, the, the size and position of the floor in this uh, volume. And then column becomes uh, uh, shifted, uh, inclined like this. And then the staircase follows this inclination and uh, making um, uh, a small space for, for, for certain activities. For example, if now we see uh, the, the left top is the kitchen. And then this is uh, the view from dining to the office. Uh, this is a living room, which is uh, borrowing the uh, neighbor's wall as a uh, wallpaper. <laughs> and then now the, the one of the landing is occupied by Moro. And we have balcony like this. <coughs> and OK, so uh, after uh, uh, another um, application of uh, um, behaviorology, um, um, became uh, this book commonalities. This uh, book um, investigates uh, the world commonalities. And it, this book tried to, to shift the gravity point of architectural design from individuality into the commonalities. How to do that? This is the question. And um, one of the chapters discuss, um, investigate the very good, good practice of uh, uh, special appropriation by the people with their behavior. And this is uh, um, the, the, the scene of uh, one of the bridges in Copenhagen. And the people are, are sitting on the uh, sidewalk, leaning on the uh, stone balustrade, watching the sunset at the, at, until the, the, the end of the last morning. And then <coughs> this, yeah, so it's it's it's, uh, it's it actually looks like this, and um, so what is happening? Yeah, actually the, the people on the bike wear jackets. So it was September, so it's already a little bit chilly in the late afternoon. But the, the people on the sidewalk are uh, reading on the uh, balustrade, stone balustrade. They wear t-shirts, more casual. So what is actually happening is the, they are enjoying the ups. Uh, le, le, uh, la, uh, the, uh, the oh? radiation. No, no. It's uh, no. Uh, the, uh, what is uh, the heat? 
heat came came from the, the stone. Radiation of the heat. <coughs> Radiation. Yeah? Yes, from the stone basket, which is which is stored during the apple. And then so it's a human it's a thing they we can observe a very primitive synchronicity and in in in, in integration between uh, two different behavior. One is the behavior of the heat from the storm, and then the other is uh, human behavior, who found this pathway comfortable to stay for a long time. And they are watching the people uh, running by the bikes. And so I, I, I think this is an emergence of uh, architectural intelligence. If we continue to, to, to fix this kind of uh, um, relationship between different uh, um, uh, behavior or to make a better, uh, more comfortable environment for us, I think it, it becomes architecture. And this is uh, um, uh, the, the cherry blossom moment in Tokyo. Um, in, in my school, we have many uh, uh, cherry trees uh, which blossom once a year. And uh, naturally, people come out. They are not the uh, school people, uh, the, the faculty member, neither the students. They are neighbors of our school. And they naturally bring their uh, drink and uh, meals, which is a uh, um, daily behavior of the people, under the um, annual behavior of the cherry. And then this uh, synchronicity and the integration of the timing of uh, cherry uh, behavior and uh, people's daily behavior <coughs> is a way to celebrate the arrival of the spring. And um, <coughs> this is a um, very cultural um, behavior which has a very long history, um, at least uh, 600 years uh, history of this kind of gathering as a kind of party. And, um, and then we naturally um, learn how to enjoy it this moment. But um, sometimes I go to, I, I found, I find um, the, the cherry, single, single, single cherry in the park, in the, in the park in the foreign city. Maybe it was planted as a kind of gift from the Japanese community. And then there is no one who enjoys the cherry as this kind of drinking and eating and that stuff. So it means this kind of behavior is somehow embedded, embodied in the in the, the, the Japanese people's uh, um, Japanese people, and, and then we train these skills to enjoy the cherry moment uh, um, through times, and then it also affects how to plant cherry trees in the, in the campus. So we try to make a dome of the, the cherry 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 flowers uh, by making an alley. So. So it's also affecting the landscape. So um, how how we uh, reflect this kind of observation into design? <coughs> um, the one of the examples is Canon Swimmers Club, um, we, which is uh, achieved in Bruji Kuna in 2015. Bruji is a very famous uh, um, city, one of the uh, world heritage site, and. Um, it's, uh, it used to be a very um, uh, international port, um, although it is uh, uh, built in, in the inland area. Uh, it's, uh, it was connected by canal. And then they, 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 it was 1930. Uh, 13 years they started this kind of uh, um, ex import export business and then turned into the stock business. And then and they have many do art collections and becomes a kind of uh, touristic destination. So they receive a million uh, tourists, and then they only have a, a uh, hundred thousand inhabitants. And so public space is uh, basically occupied by tourists. And uh, the, all the cafe around, around this, uh, for example, market, market, uh, um, near market are, uh, uh is uh, is really designed for tourists, and then there's not so many places for <coughs> local inhabitants to enjoy public space. Until 1976, the canal was uh, um, 
The uh, canal was not anymore utilized as a port uh, because the boat became bigger and bigger. It's already, uh, among, it's already out of function as a port, international trading port in the 14th century. Yeah, but uh, uh, the, 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 this water surface was uh, utilized by the citizens in, by many different people. So one of the enjoyment was swimming. And um, yeah, but until 1976, 76, 77, the uh, city prohibited to swim in the canal because of the pollution. And because uh, the city was just, yeah, built it's an old city, the sewage system it doesn't really fit to the uh, chemical, um, how to say, the soaps, etc. for for cooking. And then <coughs> water was very much contaminated. But now the sewage system improved, and then water quality is also improved. City wants, wanted to open this water surface again to the public, uh, but uh, there is still a kind of a mental barrier among people to swim. If you swim alone in this canal, and then you are recognized as a crazy person. But uh, 100 people swim together, it becomes a kind of culture of rouge. So, um, I, so uh, I was, uh, we were invited to do something. They didn't have any specific request about our participation, but they wanted just uh, us come and, and see the city and then propose something. And then I realized that I, 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 I wanted to work on this um, story about the bringing people again into the, uh, to, to, to swing. So now there is, it's just utilized for, for tourist boat and then the, the, the side was already fixed. This is a, but there is a big pattern of speed which we can't touch. And there is also another small weed, which is a very important protected weed by the city of Nepal, because it is uh, evidence uh, that uh, uh, this is indigenous weed from Latin America, South America, and then it's a, a living evidence that uh, Rouge used to be in the national port, so it's, we shouldn't touch it. <laughs> and then uh, the, we, we do a kind of, so yeah, we, we, we work together with the pontoon, uh, NATO often <coughs> to, to make a temporary base, and then we, we, we bring this group, that, that group of, um, uh, which are, which are, um, yeah, the group, but the group for this project to give a shout. So this is uh, um, like, uh, like a, but the, you know, by by different people. But the, uh, yeah, yes. But the, this is a drawing of uh, our expected uh, our public space um, um, by encouraging people to swim in this water canal again. So it's a very simple structure, and it's built. Uh, it's, it was open May 20, and but the, the water was uh, very cold, just uh, 11 degrees Celsius, and no one wants to swim. So it becomes just an object floating on the wall. So but the things we were working with, with the concept of behaviorology, I asked uh, my local partner to jump into the water <laughs> together and kiss it. And then in June, they, the, it became very really hot, so all the high school kids come to start swimming. It was a very phenomenal. And then this is August 1st. And uh, I visited, revisited uh, the, 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 the Canal Swimmers Club. And, um, and then found a very nice uh, scene. For example, the grandfather uh, teach uh, swimming to grandson or granddaughter. Yeah, it's obvious because uh, the um, they are teenager, or uh, when they were uh, in 1970s. So they can still swim, and then they can teach. And they have already a grandson and daughter. So it's a kind of a learn, learn and teach environment uh, um, between generations, um, naturally um, achieved by very simple um, setting. 
So this project really uh, um, made me clear that the, uh, the, what is the resource and what is the skills and what is the barrier. In this case, uh, the city of Bruges has a resource, which is me. But, uh, and then people have skill to swim, but there is a barrier, which is uh, pollution. And then even pollution was, uh, uh, say, uh, the issue of the pollution was improved. Then, but then, but still the mental barrier exists and the mindset of the people. And then we need certain structure to encourage people to reach again to these local resources. So this project can be um, understood in that one. Okay. Uh, so, and then also, I am renamed this project uh, um, Camel Swimmers Club uh, because I found club is very critical, very interesting, because club is in between the membership and the facility. So it, it, sometimes you can use the word club uh, for the, to describe the membership of the people, but you can also use the word club for the facility. So it's between building and the membership. And uh, I, I think that this in unstable of uh, the, the status of club is very critical to the, to the uh, today's institutionalized space. So <clears throat> now our society, uh, today's uh, uh, um, world, yeah, if, if you are living in the uh, uh, city, you will have so many facilities around this, uh, uh, for your, in, in your city. And you don't know why this facility is built. And then, uh, and then the, the first moment when, the, for example, it's a very, it's almost like me to imagine the first moment uh, when the library is built in the small city and then, and then, and then allow <coughs> anyone to come to read books as much as they want. I think it's almost like me. But the yeah, facility was uh, institutional facility used to have this kind of dream uh, among people, but uh, that gradually becomes uh, just a kind of a physical setting and then becomes a, a kind of a business uh, and, um, and public service. But I think it's very important to, to revisit the beginning of the facility, the institution again. And then club is something is gave us a chance to, to do it because the club is basically um, uh, emerged from the uh, gathering of the, uh, the the people who have to share certain skills and interests. They are so they are responsible to maintain the place and they feel pride proud uh, to to be to, to be part of. So I, I really like uh, the, the notion of club. So I continuously uh, uh, propose club structure for different uh, opportunities. So the Lake, uh, Lakeside Dancers Club was built in last summer in host music art festival in Belgium in front of the lake with uh, um, ruined castle. So this is a new. So it's a castle is from is from 19th uh, century, but now it's not accessible. So it's symbolized kind of death. But um, the dancers club can symbolize life, uh, life. <coughs> so I think that this complex is quite interesting and then remind me of the story of the Noah's Ark. And uh, so we simply introduce this uh, open or the, the, same, the open wooden box uh, uh, landing on, the, on, the, on the, the shore of the lake. But at the same time, I have a, a very strong, uh, I, I don't know why I, I, the, this story reminds me also of uh, the Gulliver in the London of the Dwarfs. Huh? Yes, the Gulliver, James. So he was, uh, um, yeah, after shipwreck, she was, uh, uh, he was, uh, he had arrived on the beach by the wave, and then, and then dwarves kept capturing him by the ropes. So this uh, ropes, rope uh, next to the water was also 
very interesting for me. So I try to um, hybridize this uh, Mozart and uh, Gulliver into the form of like the left side of the sketch. So it's a uh, uh, it's open structure uh, sus supported by the uh, inverted uh, uh, bow beam, which is uh, like this. So tension cable uh, tension rope holds inclined um, uh, columns, and this uh, columns can be cladded by the series of uh, planks, and then it holds uh, like like this, and then create good, good acoustic, and uh, and then this uh, rope um, tension rope can be a general uh, roof, and then it also can be infrastructure to install the lighting fixture. So, and then it's also allowed uh, amateur to participate in the construction because there is no heavy elements on above the head. So, <clears throat> because the budget was very limited, so we have to design the structure uh, with the premise of, uh, of uh, um, uh, volunteer workers, uh, uh, amateur volunteer workers. So this is uh, the, during the construction. So we introduced this uh, um, um, knot system of the rope for the yacht, those kind of things. And then <coughs> it holds the structure. Yeah, there are the participants, uh, uh, young architects or um, uh, students who work hard for the, for the construction. And then the, the DJ booth is covered by a very simple plastic uh, roof. Uh, and um, so we, we went to the we, we went through the 
damage the village. And so, for example, the dead guy who sees a house, and then there is a mountain. And then if you go to the mountain, you find the place to build the building area. It's covered by silver trees, which is, which is unmanaged from uh, 1980s. And um, why it's, it's founded in 1950s, 60s, by the wives of uh, fishermen. And then it grew up, so 50 years old, 60 years old tree. Is some of them are ready to, 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 to utilize for construction. But actually, this local resource is uh, inaccessible uh, now because uh, it's very costly and uh, uh, it's, it, we, they can't compete against uh, imported timber from North America, like Canada, and the United States. And uh, it's happened after the 1980s. In 84, we had a plaza agreement. And then the monetary, this monetary uh, operation really changed the balance between the dollar and the Japanese yen. And also um, the trading uh, relationship between Japan and the United States. And then almost uh, forest industry uh, was a sacrifice, was a sac sacrifice uh, in, in this process. So Japanese government tried to protect the car industry and the home uh, electric industry, but, um, uh, but uh, they sacrificed the uh, uh, forest industry. So from 1980s, forest industry declined, and then it becomes quite a big issue. Because uh, forest industry is not only production of the uh, timber, but it's also the, the way to maintain the landscape. So we have many landslides after the heavy rain because uh, of the, the soils is now becomes quite uh, uh, fragile. Um, there's no uh, the plants and the, uh, the, 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 the vegetation which holds the, the, the soil in a, uh, uh, in, in a uh, enough uh, um, um, good manner. So many, many places we have, we experience uh, landslide there. So what, and then also uh, another, uh, our method was uh, almost like a ethnographer. Since uh, the village was all swallowed by tsunami, it's all gone. So it's very difficult to guess what was the, the life of the fishermen. And uh, normally we architects can guess by visiting the village, uh, okay, 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 ah, okay, okay. So, so building and uh, arrangement of houses uh, really tells us the lifestyle of the people of the place. But in this case, it's all all gone. So we are obliged to ask question every about every aspect of the life of the fishermen. So it took a very long time, but uh, the fishermen are very, they don't have any things to do, so they are very happy to receive us and talk, 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 talk. <laughs> <laughs> and then based on this uh, hearing, we made this uh, kind of sketch, include as a kind of reconstructed map of the village, and also a uh, uh, future uh, expectation of the village. So some area on the top of the hill, it is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, it's not clear, uh, is it better? Yeah, something like this. And together with uh, a new program on the lower part, uh, near the water, which is designated as a red zone, which is inhabitable area for by the government. And, um, and during this period, uh, we, we realized that there are less and less, and less people want to come back to the <coughs> home village, their village. They already moved out from the village and then start living in the bigger city. Um, many of, in most of the cases, the kids, their, their, their sons, daughters, who live in the city area, uh, ask their father and mother to come to live together. And then they, they are in the big city, there is a hospital, and uh, easy to shop, etc. So they, many of them move. So in order to re re uh, encourage people to come back to the village, because uh, yeah, we, yeah, of course, we can also ac accept the, the, this, uh, the, the disappearing of all the population from this uh, um, uh, 
from this peninsula, but uh, we have to have one a very clear hypothesis that, okay, we, we support people wants to come back. Yeah. So, so because why we try to encourage people to come back to the, to the village by designing a tiny little house, which is uh, very affordable, like, uh, yeah, very cheap. But uh, maybe um, fishermen can only pay uh, 30, 35,000 uh, 35, dollars yeah. uh, together with subsidy uh, from the government. So this, is, uh, this project is called Core House because we just uh, built the core part of the, 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 the house for fishermen together with uh, uh, this eight tatami room and kitchen and bathroom. And then it's constructed by in the, in the method uh, called Itakura, which is a traditional way, which consume more timber uh, than the uh, modern wooden construction. And uh, also it's a very quick construction. So as you see here, uh, we could make uh, the whole framework and then also the uh, wall in two days. So we can add it the exterior wall and insulation from outside and then the frame, uh, window frame and then that's all. So this interior wall was uh, uh, already finished uh, uh, seven <coughs> days of the construction. And uh, it's very warm, very high performance um, in terms of insulation. And, um, <coughs> and then uh, our idea is to uh, yeah, build tiny little core house and then the fishermen can add more rooms, little by little, uh, after coming back to the, the village, because uh, fishermen earn quite good money. So for them, it's not difficult to, 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 to let the house grow uh, based on our scheme. But actually, fishermen prefer to live in a big house. And then they, yeah, we made a model and a proposal one to two twenty scale model, and they say, oh yes, yes, it's good, but uh, yeah, but still uh, we don't know. And let's uh, can we make uh, the real one, and then and then one to one scale, and then we decided to, to make it by by funding budget, and, and then and then asking many companies to help uh, providing the materials. Uh, and this is a model house um, building. One of the village, and through this experience, we become very how say, good friends. We have, have some strong uh, how say, relation with uh, fishermen, and uh, especially Momoyo. The Momoyo, my partner, uh, works in Momo. So Momo is Momo, and Momo means peach, yeah? both cases. And uh, so they, uh, he, she, she met the leader of the village, who, is, uh, who used to be captain of the long distance uh, fish, fishing boat. But uh, so he's a really very intelligent uh, uh, man with strong leadership. So he was, he wanted to, to start fishermen's school in order to invite a new, new people from outside the the one of the big issue of the fishermen village in Japan is it, it is uh, it's uh, very close to membership because uh, fishing right is only possible to be inherited from your father. So newcomer <coughs> can't become fisherman. So this because it's totally related to the, the how to maintain the common common ground in the in this kind of small fishing village. So the fishing, uh, as I say, this bay is is uh, the commons for them. In order to, to to maintain these resources, so they have to establish a very precise manner to work together with with their community members. So they, it's very difficult to receive newcomers from outside because it's really ch change the balance between resource and member. So because why the <coughs> The people in the farming area, fishing area, are quite uh, uh, conservative, and then they they sometimes uh, complain by the city people that they are 
they are very close. Uh, but yeah, people, city people, they grew up in the premise that uh, all the facility is basically accessible and uh, the city life is based on the exchangeability, so you can come and go. So this kind of open membership is, uh, is the premise of the life of the city. But the life in the village uh, is uh, totally opposite. It's, a, it's a based on the premise of close membership. So I think that this is, makes a lot of misunderstanding between uh, uh, fishing um, uh, farming area and uh, people from the city. Many people want to live in the city, uh, in the, wants to move from city to the farming area, fishing area, because they want to touch nature and work together with nature. But they come from these difficulties uh, of the mind, mindset established by the close membership. And uh, they can't, uh, uh, yeah, they, they, they suffer with this. So they come back to the city and then uh, criticize uh, farmers and farming village and uh, fishing villages that they are conservative as well, etc. But this is a very un unhappy uh, result. Because in both case, both party, <coughs> farming area, fishing area, and the city people, they both need each other actually. Uh, because now the farming area, fishing area is confronting the depopulation. There is no success of young generation. And so, because why this fishing school uh, uh, established, and then city people also wants to know more about food production. They want to be more responsible. About uh, what they eat, what they they cultivate. So, so the two needs can match, but uh, the, this mentality established by the different type of membership, and and this membership is different member uh, mentality of the different membership are uh, actually fixed in the form of the space, form of facilities, etc. So uh, there are a lot of chance for artists to put them in, into this um, exchange between the city and the farming and fishing area. So yeah, this, this project, yes, recovery project gradually turned into the urban uh, rural exchange program. So we made a, a textbook. This is the first time uh, a fisherman made a textbook. And uh, we also continue this, uh, uh, we, we did many editions of the fisherman school. And uh, the, this, this uh, model was produced through the seventh um, uh, uh, fisherman school. And then it was about mountains, it was about uh, the forest, how fishermen utilize uh, our resources from the mountain. So they also know they are also very skillful and knowledgeable about the maintenance of the mountain. But uh, they don't have enough manpower to maintain it. So, so the, the, we gradually realized that there are many interesting resources, but the, 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 we, the, there's no, uh, the, uh, the, the, the manpower is lacking, uh, short, uh, yes. So, so this is a, a valley section of, the, of this Momonora village. And yeah, we, we, we start to draw this kind of uh, um, valley section to understand the uh, active network of things in the farming area. Because we realize that the fish is not only working in the, in the ocean, they also work in the mountain. And then mountain is related to the house construction. And then the backside of the house is also related, uh, is utilized for the food production. And so, so, and then this is a series of the valley section uh, on different fields showing the, how the, uh, the, uh, the elements uh, in, the, in, the, in this village uh, gradually uh, uh, transform from one to the other. And then we found uh, one middle layer is, uh, is always uh, uh, receiving this transformation. So we, we found, okay, this middle layer, which is an empty 2011, is, can, be new, uh, can, be, uh, can be utilized for new problem because uh, we already uh, realized that the, uh, there is no place for the newcomer who wants to become fisherman in this village 
So we need uh, the place for, for them to live. So it's very difficult to make house for, for, for them from the beginning. So at first, we, 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 we try to make a kind of camping site, but it's also an kind of education uh, facility for fishermen school. Yeah, this is uh, one the, uh, the valley section from 1930s and uh, the view uh, of 1960s, so it's a little bit different. So it was very harmonious. But uh, actually, through the, um, yes, now recovery is going on. And uh, the left up to diagram is uh, uh, the valley section diagram, which was uh, proposed, which was fixed by the government. So government fixed this scheme in order to invest public money for reconstruction. So there is a sea bank, and then the lower part is designated for um, an inhabitable area, and so it is just legalized for farm runs and for the production of uh, factory, etc. And then there is another second type, which is uh, also the new route or uh, regulator. And then behind that, there is housing. <coughs> And then what is actually happening is a lower image, this one. And um, it's, uh, yes, it's number-wise, number of the house. Number-wise, the reconstruction is going on. Yeah, I think the government is happy and people are happy because the uh, house is already built. But actually, those houses are totally industrialized, uh, kind of a uh, cut out house, and, uh, which is, which, which is very similar to the uh, suburban landscape of Tokyo. This is the Tokyo suburb from Tokyo suburb, uh, the, the <coughs> work of Hong, Hakashi Honga, the photographer, who took the, the, the who investigated this kind of uh, <coughs> uh, residential area in the suburb of Tokyo. And then it uh, it looks so similar. So why this? Uh, uh, yes. So it means reconstruction was achieved in, time, in, in, in the sense of number of houses, but in, in the sense of network, we failed. Uh, the, this, the, the local network of, of, the, of the forest and house and the, uh, carpenters who live there were replaced by industrial, industrial network of the house from house industry. So, um, yes. Based on this uh, ideas, yeah, we continue this uh, mono, uh, the fisherman's school, and then we we build monogonal village by cutting the trees and then utilizing this uh, wood for construction. We also organize a summer school to make houses. It's a, also an opportunity to learn how to construct it by your hand. So we have uh, uh, one main building, a kind of a, um, uh, so administrative main building with a uh, tatami room, the big kitchen is a room, and bathroom designed by Baba, and then two small hut designed by young artists and built by them, together with a participant of the fisherman school. Yeah, it looks like this. So this is a, a train education facilities about the skills and knowledge about fishing and uh, maintenance of the mountains cropping the vegetables, or wild vegetables and mushrooms, and how to cook fish. So it's all about the, 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 the life of fish. Yes. <coughs> OK. We, we also organize a workshop of the stone, uh, reconstruction of the, of the stone wall, which used to be built by the farmers. Now it's a deteriorated. So we, we, we learn how to do it. And we also uh, work, uh, we start the kind of ancestral festival in the middle of the summer uh, by making the boat with uh, um, straws uh, from, the, from the rice. And then put it in the, together with the, um, the vegetables and the uh, fruits to the uh, ocean. So we did uh, also the, the, the fisherman school about the Japanese boat, because we discovered the collection of the old wooden Japan, Japanese boat in the, um, uh, in the closed uh, junior high school uh, gymnasium. 
So we try to utilize these resources um, uh, to make uh, kind of um, the museum. The, so the project is uh, how to make this uh, uh, heritage accessible uh, for the visitors. And then also local uh, inhabitants. Yeah. Uh, okay, that, that, this is the last one, yeah. Uh, so Koizuru Buddha Laboratory and Kurimoto Naiji Firewood Supply Station is also a manual exchange program. But this, this case, it's uh, close to Tokyo. One and a half hour drive from Tokyo. But uh, there is a very beautiful farming landscape. And um, this is in Shiba Prefecture, near Narita Airport. And then the topography wise is very common. So there are many, uh, <coughs> The valleys running through the uh, um, hills like um, uh, fingers. So, um, and then top of the hill is uh, cultivated as a farm, and then bottom in the valley is a rice paddy, and then the slope between them is covered by cedar forest, which is also unmanaged. Right? But it's actually beautiful. And then the first project. Uh, in this region was uh, Koizu Buddha Laboratory. It's a ham and sausage factory and pork shabu shabu restaurant. Uh, in, and um, and uh, uh, with, uh, uh, to hire, to produce a job for the uh, disabled people in, the, in this region. The, the, the end, there is a very interesting NGO group, uh, Fukushika. Uh, the, the chairman, uh, the founder of uh, he's also running pork farm, and uh, he he always has to be to to integrate two different businesses. One is uh, raising pork, and then the other is uh, um, uh, social welfare service uh, in, in, the, in the region. And they all have already uh, <coughs> started to running the daycare center. Elderly homes in the same region, and by by starting this business, they realize that, that there are so many disabled people living here, living in the, in the region, without having any job. So they can't become independent. So they found it's a very serious, also for, for social welfare business. So they they realize that this pork can be resource to produce job for disabled people. So ham and sausage factory is well articulated into small rooms, and then each room has uh, its own uh, work. So the, the, the mentally disabled people uh, is, has a very high, shows very high performance on the um, one single um, repetitive uh, um, labor. So it really works. And then they hire them as a kind of real staff and pay the, uh, the normal salary. So in order to make this building, uh, it's in the farming area. So how we, we investigated the, the, the gesture of the building at, at first. And uh, the up, 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 up two images is a station, road station, which is road <coughs> station, where you can buy the local vegetables and you can stop and have uh, simple meals like uh, noodles, etc. And it's a very popular, so, but the, the basic uh, uh, formula of this kind of facility uh, is uh, a big uh, parking uh, on the street side and the building behind it. So <coughs> we all, it looks like the invasion of the car, car culture into farming culture. And I, I think uh, <coughs> the, the concept of this coastal development <coughs> <coughs> can't be like this. It should appear as a, as a building belongs to the farm, farming culture. So I, I, I realize that this urban rural uh, exchange program is not the first case in, the, in the, the, the history of human beings. We had a very good presence. For example, this, uh, the raw image, Villa Barbaro by <coughs> Andrea Palatin. Yeah, in 1560, <coughs> this uh, um, palladio invented the dinner type of issue. In order to um, uh, 
increase uh, the aristocrat or the, the merchant who invest money for the farming in the, the land side of Venice. Because at that moment, they lost the destination to invest. It used to be Constantinople, but uh, Constant Constantinople was occupied by Osman. So the, the, the money was looking for the, the new direction. And then this land side of Venice was discovered as a, the destination to invest. So they made many farms. And then it was the first time for this uh, Aristotle who, who always lived uh, in the city, stay in the farming area. So in order to convince them, to please them, uh, Palladio uh, introduced this uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the temple, uh, Greek temples or columns uh, 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 as a design tools of the uh, of, of villa. It's a kind of an urban rural exchange program typology uh, from the uh, 16th century. And uh, so I, I, I found, okay, Okay, we can also apply same typology for this project. So the, the main, the building itself is uh, square, but we have a long wing uh, running uh, uh, in front of the building, uh, and then we bring uh, most of the parking behind the mound, uh, and then hide the parking. Most of the high park parking is not visible from the street. We have several in front of the loggia. We have a long loggia to receive uh, any kind of uh, uh, activities, like uh, local farmers can come and sell their vegetables. So, in, 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 so, in, so lower level is a uh, ham and sausage factory, and upper level is a uh, um, restaurant. And they are heading for the office. So interior of the uh, 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 factory. So the, he's also a uh, staff working for this uh, facility. And um, yeah, this is an area of the uh, restaurant. So the uh, upper level is uh, surrounded by a uh, uh, living window. They allow anyone uh, uh, us to see the surroundings. And then the beautiful uh, cedar trees, uh, always. But uh, as normally people say, oh, it's beautiful. But uh, if, if you know more about the forest, forest management, those forest is unhealthy, very dark, not accessible. Mm -hmm. Then, gradually, the, this energy will start realizing that we have to care, okay? We start caring people, and then now we care the building by cleaning, etc., et and creating a better environment for, for, for the disabled people to work. And then why not the, the surroundings? So behind the buildings, we have a forest. So why, why not? Uh, okay, let's start maintaining the forest. So they start asking the uh, landowner of the forest to let them uh, maintain the forest. So they sing the uh, trees and then produce firewood, right? And then store them, right? It's at the edge of the uh, property. And then it was 2012, uh, the one year after the, the big earthquake explosion of Fukushima nuclear power. It was a moment when people became very conscious about diversifying the uh, energy resources. And then a uh, firewood stove was rediscovered at that moment. But uh, there is not so many su good supply chain of, uh, of firewood. So many people came, asked them, please uh, let us buy those uh, uh, firewood. So, <coughs> This NGO group found, oh, it could be another business to make a job for this LB. So this uh, new scheme uh, uh, came up. Uh, I was, we were involved from the very beginning. And then we always tried to uh, illustrate uh, the ideas of this NGO group. <coughs> and then we also give some ideas. And so we developed the idea together. So this new facility, Koisu Kurimoto, Daiichi Firewood Supply Station is uh, transformed this, utilize this uh, unmanaged uh, cedar trees, cedar forest, as resources uh, for, to, to create a job for disabled people. On connecting people from the city and uh, from the region uh, in, the, in the same place. 
So creating a, a new type of membership. But there is many barriers in, in introducing, in order to introduce disabled people to forest, forest management. And normally we chop the, uh, the traditional chop, chopping of the firewood is uh, by axe, and then it could be quite dangerous. And then this angel group uh, found, said, oh, this split machine is a very free device for them to participate into, into this business. And it was really mind, uh, I, uh, mind blowing because uh, um, in the school of architecture uh, or in the professional architects, the barrier free means connecting different levels by ground slopes and the elevators. But, um, uh, but there are more barriers in the society. So, so there are several devices which can, which can reduce and resolve this barrier uh, for someone who wants to access to such resources. So uh, I, I, I was uh, I, I was really fascinated by this uh, by, by by this discovery, and then I asked my students to work together in Tokyo Tech, and then uh, first we did uh, this dissecting uh, diagrams of the process of thinning trees and making fires from the beginning to the end, and uh, so we drew the all the different processes, and then find several uh, processes. Uh, available for disabled people if we make a uh, very good uh, uh, manual. So we also designed a manual how to, for example, one, one of the, uh, the, the process is chopping wood. So how to use this uh, speakers with uh, photos and very simple Japanese uh, instructions, etc. At the beginning, my student made uh, uh, the draft, but it was uh, totally revised by the NGO team because uh, my student used very abstract, difficult pose. And uh, so even in the world, there is a barrier. For the, so for disabled people, it was too difficult. So, and then we start finding the uh, actors, uh, local actors who can contribute to this project. So we wanted to re-encourage the forest uh, business in, the, in this region. So we, we visited many uh, being factory and uh, wood stocks, uh, wood, wood lumber yards and wood yard. And then, some, for example, some, one of them is, uh, is totally destroyed by earthquake, but still in this, in this, uh, in this condition. So this is uh, the, uh, the now the, uh, the landscape of the, of the project. The right side is uh, Koizuku Laboratory, where you yeah, Hammond Sausage Factory. And then left side, it's uh, uh, this firewood supply station. And then we utilize uh, the forest, the wood, from, from, from the <coughs> neighboring forest. Yes, the building is actually built by the wood, the cedar trees from, the, from this uh, the wood next, next to the site. And then farmland in the middle, it, it's a sweet potato farm. So the, this NGO will also utilize this farm as a care farm. And then a small sh uh, building in the middle is a sweet, sweet potato shop. Uh, they cook sweet potato and sell. So we start chopping trees together with uh, uh, the forest, forest workers, uh, local forest workers, and then and peel the uh, skins and bark, and then uh, uh, work together with uh, uh, local carpenters. And so we try to utilize this block um, as column. And so this is the construction. And um, so you see the column is a, is a very fat um, block. And this is a very old uh, carpenter, Takahashi, like who always helps us. So this is a scene of the uh, uh, frame up. The 400 people came to celebrate this moment. So you see the structure of the frame. This is this uh, timber frame structure is a, is a kind of newly designed by by us. And uh, in order to 
also let uh, local see that we can be the main beam of the, of the building. So normally this kind of uh, long span beam needs uh, a, a very high performance of the of young, uh, young, uh, I don't know the young uh, case. Huh? Four, yes, it should be very strong, strong, you know. But see that he is not uh, good, in, good enough for B because it's easily split and then also it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not so strong P. So we can use it for column or compression, but not for bending. So, but um, by, by adding several small uh, elements, we can also utilize local uh, C that is for, for, for the roof construction. So I think this kind of a, a careful design is also change the membership, including local resources. And then, so this is a view from the wall. Yeah. So simple roof, uh, changing its height, uh, housing different uh, programs underneath. The lower part is the daycare center. Uh, middle part is uh, <coughs> a private supply station. It's a tertiary. And then the higher part is the share office. So we have the uh, uh, central axis passing through the farm, care farm. And then this really invites people who visit the Koisu Dalawa the restaurant. They are, while they are waiting for the, for the restaurant, uh, they often, they, they can also visit this facility or, and uh, ask people what, is do, what are they doing. So the, the, this mid, uh, central space is totally open on both sides. So, <coughs> Yes, the machine. And then at the end of the, this axis, there is a, a log, um, 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 okay, so boiler. So you can put big log with a chop. And then this boiler provides all the hot water for this for floor heating and the shower and uh, bath. And then this is uh, one of the quite nice scene. The visitors from the city, city who visit the Koizu Laboratory spend keen time to visit uh, this fire supply station, passing through the arcade. Uh, so this is the membership wise, it's all mixed, and uh, it's very natural. And uh, I think this kind of uh, uh, exchange is uh, extremely important. Okay, maybe I skip the last one, which is a kind of a housing in the mountain area to encourage people to move from city side to the to the to the uh, forestry area. So we built this long housing made of wood using a local wood with uh, uh, local carbon. Okay. Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> Yeah, I, okay, so to wrap up the, today's discussion, I'd like to, to share this diagram with you. Uh, this is a very, yeah, and maybe it's too much sim simplified, but uh, what I talk was <coughs> about this uh, hybrid between ethnographical network and industrial society network. So through the experience of, of helping the fishermen, I really encountered people who, uh, who have Who's, who's, uh, who's, whose life is, uh, is, uh, is observed uh, as a kind of a subject of ethnography. So they are still living in the ethnographical network, utilizing their own environment as, as their, their resources for living. So they have direct access to resources. And then they have the skills and knowledge to do that. But uh, on the right side, the, the people living in the city are totally dependent on the industrial society network. And uh, we can easily get any kind of food and energy by paying money. And then, it's, uh, and then the resource-wise, uh, this industrial um, society network uh, bring uh, any kind of resources from, from everywhere, from the, from the, the opposite side of the planet. So the accessibility, actually, access this uh, uh, Social uh, industrial society network actually produces barrier between people and local resources. 
We still have local resources around us, but there are many barriers which blocks to reach there. So I think the 20th century was a project to bring people from this radical network into industrial society network. I think as then we can really show high performance of the productivity, which could, which, which became uh, possible by the industrial revolution. So it was a kind of one, a natural uh, shift from a sort of radical network into industrial society network after uh, the, uh, the industrial revolution. But actually, people are living in this hybrid. We are still in the hybrid zone. For example, in Japan, even in the, in the city area, people still wear off shoes to go inside the building, to, 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 to go inside of the house. So we are still keep that kind of behavior uh, in the house design. And then it's, uh, it's, a, it's a still, we are still connected with the ethnographical network. So in that sense, we are very much hybrid. But uh, minds, since we lost so many skill set, we, we gave our skills to the industry. So this loss of the skill set affects on our mindset. So we even if we often believe that we are totally living in this industrial society network, no, 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 but actually we are in a hybrid zone. So I think the project of the 21st century is bringing uh, people, guiding pe people into this hybrid zone to enjoy both industrial, uh, to, 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 yeah, to, to work together with the industrial society network and the small graphical uh, network by, yeah, and then sometimes help this ethnographical network and then sometimes criticize the industrial society network. And then in order to, to bring people in, to guide people in the hybrid zone, we should tackle this barrier which was established by the industry, and then resolve them and then lower them to make better accessibility to local resources. Uh, thank you.